I am excited. I have another celebrity. Let me loosen my neck. I'm just having a hard time breathing, getting ready for the show. I'm so excited. Always be comfortable. Yes, yes. This might even come off. Um, Todd is in the building. Not this building, but a building. The gentleman to the right of me, or your left, uh, we're on Jeff of All Trades podcast number, I don't know, seven, eight, something like that. And I have the privilege to talk to Todd, but more than that, we're going to be talking about what he's doing and who he's with and how he was able to convince me to do the same thing, which is not easy. So Todd, introduce yourself. Thank you for coming on today. How are you? Awesome. How are you, Jeff? Good. Thanks for having me. So we're, um, you know, we're 20 years at Remax now, EXP Realty. Um, we knew it was time for change, and we looked around the lot for probably a good four months to see what would fit us. And between opening up our own, opening our own franchise with Remax and a variation of models, and this just seemed to fit the mold that we were looking for. And, you know, the, the, the company has so much to offer, which we'll drop some, some information in the links. Uh, below that have more to do with the company, but I mean, it's just so much here that, that has to do and just the way that the culture around us has helped us grow with the agents that we're getting involved with and the agents that have come over because of our move is just exciting. How long have you been in Longwood? How long have you lived in Longwood? 25 years. Wow. That's almost as old as I am. That's yes. almost as old as I am. I try. And have you been doing real estate for 25 years? Yes. Oh, 1995. wow. You look really good for being like 30. Man, you look real good. Exactly. Um, do you have any kids, a family? or? Uh, my, my wife is my partner in the business, and our kids are going to local schools here. We've got a son and a daughter uh, going into fifth and sixth grade, so we're excited. Awesome, awesome. Now, I know this because you told me, but you said your parents are in real estate as well. Yes, I am. Actually, so I've, I've been in the business now 44 years, if I consider it right out the gate. Uh, my mom is a, a second-generation realtor, yes. And she does she does traditional real estate and she does uh, timeshares or something like she, that. She did traditional real estate for many, many moons and has been doing timeshare for the last 20 plus years. Wow. And timeshare is not easy. Anybody? It's it's not. It's a timeshare resales is a whole other animal. Anybody that's done timeshares is in timeshares. You'll realize real fast it takes a special person to, to stay in timeshares. Unlike real estate, timeshares, you have to get an answer within five, three to five hours. You can't let them leave without getting an answer. There's there's no science in the follow-up. With real estate, you can follow up. So anybody yep. looking to get into timeshare, it's a one-day slam deal. And that's where a lot of salespeople get a bad name because they try to throw out the kids, the family, the magic tricks, the emotional trick, and all that just to get someone to commit because they don't have an opportunity to talk to them the next day. There, that There's no tomorrow. The world's going to end today. You have to make a decision today. Everything's going to ride on this one decision if you make it yes or no. So time shift. Luckily, she's out of that. She did that market for a very short time, and she got into the traditional side of it or the resale side that basically if you want to buy something, what you spent so much money on, you can buy it for this much, and we're going to find you the best deal. And people, it's just a repeat customer business now. It's not... You know, you got to sign before you leave the gates, and, you know, thanks for the free breakfast. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So you yeah. want to be the second person in on timeshare. Yeah. You want to be it's, the second person in. It is and not an increasing value more, um, proposition that you've got there. I don't talk a lot about real estate, but today, guys, it's about real estate. A lot of the other podcasts have been about other stuff. Um, besides real estate today, we're just going to talk about, well, the other ones have been about real estate, but this is more real estate agent-based, uh, yep. more agent-based. Of course, it helps buyers and sellers to know the insides of what helps a good agent. I feel that that is when a seller or a buyer is looking to hire an agent. I feel that that's a good thing. Just because there's a big company and a company's been around a long time, it doesn't necessarily mean they have the, the structure and the tools to help that agent uh, do the job right. And me and Todd know that firsthand. But before we go into that, um, I went into your office the other day and I saw these plaques on the wall. Tell me a little bit there. I can kind of see one of them to the left. There they are, right there. And you have some crazy plaques. To, so the 25 years that you've been doing real estate, were you always a team, or did you start as an individual? 
or we started a team about nine years ago. Uh, started the concept, and really the team came out as just myself and an assistant. Um, and then once we got you know the, the momentum going, we need you know more transactions, more listings, more sign calls, more opportunities. We wanted to bring someone else into the team to kind of help with that because one man can only do so much, even you know with the paperwork side of things and all of it. So we brought on the buyer's agent or the, the team member and had one or two before you know, we, we, Angela McCurdy had come on our team. She's been with us now five years. And, you know, since the, the move we've had, we have now, we've actually grown to three more agents. So it's exciting on that part. Um, but we've always stayed a small team and it's, it's been nice, you know, to kind of grow just a little bit because we have a lot of opportunity that's out there. Um, and it's, you know, we want to take advantage of it. And I think a team, that's a great answer. So you, I, I thought you, um, I didn't realize you didn't start as an individual. I think going out there and learning it, but you know, there might not have been an opportunity when you got your license to join a good team. I think right out of the gate, it's good if you don't have any experience in real estate to, to join a team because you get this experience, you get all the tools that you don't even know they exist. There's right. so many tools like what you offer your team. I mean, you have log boxes, you have headshots taken, you have a lot of um, assistant stuff, you know, uh, you have two full-time staff members uh, to yep. work for. So there's, there's a lot of perks for you allow. All you have to do is, is lead generation instead of all this other stuff that a lot of other agents like myself have to do. So that's cool. That's no, cool. The, the concept is great, especially for newer agents. It gets them, you know, a model to come into, get started, figure the business out. And if you love the team concept, stick with it. If not, you know, you, you've taken the knowledge, take it and move on. Um, we want you to succeed whether you're with us or, or on your own. I mean, if I bring someone into the company or, or to the team and I'm not training them properly, I'm going to watch them flounder, and that's not the goal in this business. We want to see everyone that we talk to succeed. And, you know, the, the team concept, there's a lot of different versions of it, but we have, you know, I think a pretty good setup where there's always someone that's available, you know, especially with the administration support, um, they take care of 90% of the stuff that happens on the team. And if we wouldn't be where we are without them. Your secret weapon, you're behind the yes. scenes. Yep. They sit in a dark room, literally next to you, just working away like minions. Like yep. the power goes out, you will have backup power because they just keep working and working and working. Well, it you doesn't know. matter if the lights are on because they're working with them off. So, you know. Yeah, they're, they, they, they go They wanted to switch and I said, nope, comes out of your pay. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah. You want it brighter? You got to – no, that's mean. That's <laughs> right. No, no. But no, they, I, you know, that, that's, that's so true though. Um, and that's a good – you know, that's an awesome position to be in. It's, it's not yep. easy to get in that position. You know, uh, you said something at the very beginning that I don't hear enough of. I really don't hear enough of, and that is – if I don't train the agent correctly, they're going to sit there and flounder and not do well, and that's not good. If I don't sit there and train and be there, and, and not just be there to be a, like a sounding board or a problem solver in the sense of negotiation, but you're to be there in all the fields of growth, training, structure, schedule, time block. You know, if, if you're not teaching someone those skills, then they're, they're just going to go in a circle and not make any money. What a lot of agents don't know is the first year of a real estate agent is like 10 grand, an average salary. This is an average. Like 80 something percent of all real estate agents, their first year is 10 grand. 20% do 80% of the business. And I think it's actually 16% of it now. And I am happy to say that I'm just like, I'm right at that 16, like I'm just hitting that 16 mark where I'm part of that 16%. You're like part of the top three or four or 5% that are doing 84% uh, of the business. Um, you know, how, how accurate is that? What do you think of that? Do you think that's true? I think it's any sales company, any sort of business that you're involved in, it is always the 80, 20 rule. You know, if you're going to define down to the 16%, uh, you know, I'm not a mathematician, so I'm not going to calculate out that far, but I, I feel still feel that it is the 80, 20 rule. We want to bring those younger agents into the, the 20% and maybe we make it 70, 30, you know, um, we just don't want you to fail. And it is an expensive business to get into. I mean, by the time you, you get the lock boxes and you get the signs, you get all that, you're a couple thousand dollars right out the gate, just get from, from class to sign up for board to everything else. And 
So it's like it alleviates some of those costs if you are on the team. Get situated, learn how, learn the market, learn the business, get a couple closings in, make another investment. And you know, the, if you're not putting money away for taxes, also that's going to come back to bite you in the back end too. So you go make twenty thousand your first year, you didn't put twenty five percent of it away. Guess what? You're zero dollars profit made. You've got to make sure you're 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 budgeting right. You are time blocking to do all these things correctly, like you're talking about. I mean, it's it's worth sitting down and, and having the coaches or the, the the people that are going to teach you how to do all that stuff. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. The taxes is a big thing. I made that mistake. You can only get away with not paying for a couple years. And if you're trying <laughs> to buy a house, you you know, a, a lot of people learn that the wrong way. They want to go buy a house, but they don't say anything about they haven't paid their taxes. They don't realize how important that is. This yep. is not about you know loans. Uh, but doing your taxes is is very important. And when if someone's never been on a 1099, I've been on commission my entire life, majority of it. So I'm very used to 1099. I'm sure you have for you know 25 years. Yeah. You you want to have a good accountant and and you want to put money away. But what if you're in a situation where you run out of money every month and you can't put it away? You just have to. And and that's where you really got to make a decision on. You have to commit to get better. And then that's where being with the right broker, being around the right people, uh, being on the right team is going to come in because it's going to get you that consistent closing, those consistent ideas. You know, if you're around someone that's doing deals consistently, you're you're going to do deals consistently. That's motion just, creates motion. I mean, that's what it is. And and if you're in an office for agents out there, if you're in an office that. You know, you those there might be people doing deals, but you don't. You're not able to talk to them. They're old school agents, and no, no uh, disrespect to old school agents, because I know you're one. But there's a lot of old. <laughs> I threw that in there. You like Just that? Right. There, there's a lot of old school agents that are so freaked out that oh my god, there's not enough business. There's not enough business. I'm a threat. I'm a threat. I'm a threat. I'm going to take all your business. And that is the opposite. That could be further. Uh, from the opposite, and they don't want to talk, you know, God forbid they give you any type of update or idea. But the thing that they don't realize is they're behind by being in that type of atmosphere and always being the fear of running out and, and not wanting. To, and a lot of those type of people don't grow. They're like, oh, I don't need to learn anymore. Oh, I, I, I know that. Oh, they're just going to teach that anyways. They're falling behind. They're going to be left behind. Real estate is changing so much and it's changing so much for the, over the last couple of years they're the, they're trying to take the commission they're trying to take the commission and make it where we don't get a commission and and, and if we don't make the right decisions and present ourselves well people are going to start to believe that we sh you know oh we should be able to do this for no commission um like that one company i don't know if i can say the name but they had that thing where we're going to list your house for free you know yeah. no cost but it's a promotion and it's a charity and we can only do it a thousand times. Read the fine print. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and little do they know, they do nothing, not to go on a little bandwagon about him. But you said uh. something um, about being on a team and, and when I looked at teams um, and I, I ended up getting away from one, you know, I, I met you, I think, let's talk a little bit about that. You were at the gym, you went to the gym. I used, you, well, you went to the gym I still go to. I don't know what happened to you. I, you know what, I, I tripped walking out the door and decided it, I, I should have just stayed in my car. No. I look for you and wait for you every day, every day. <laughs> I don't, I remember seeing your flyers and you would leave them on the counter of uh, military First. discount, some type yep. of discount, which I thought was cool. And yeah. Then, uh, I took you out to Panera for something, for yep. coffee or something to pick your brain when I first got my license. And I wasn't full time yet. Um, that was the goal. And you were with Remax. You know, I didn't realize how close you are down the street from where I'm at. You know, I didn't yep. realize the close proximity. But um, I think, you know, for somebody that has a team and that consistently does well, I think you're – are you one of the top 100 people and real producers with Aaron? We are, uh, yes. You are? You are out of the teams? Yep. Yeah, that, that's a big deal. I don't think people realize how much work goes in that. How many deals – how many houses or how many families do you help a year? How many? How many? We are helping over a hundred families a year find new homes. That's big. Or, and a handful of those are investors selling properties. But you know, let's say ninety percent of the business is finding new homes for new families. 
whether they're upsizing, downsizing, right sizing, left sizing, there it's it's a full circle of what's going on. That's a lot. And that and yep. to do it one year, but to do it every single year, I think people forget the amount of work because it just doesn't it's a wheel and it can easily stop. It can easily stop. Um, oh yeah, you, you just wrong. walk out the back door. It, it doesn't continue. You've got to be there. You've got to be in the business and doing it. And why you see my face everywhere is because we're putting things in every place that we can, you know, to keep the the recognition going. And it, it helps. You know what? Let's talk a little bit about the things that you do for your clients. Yeah. Um, I remember this one time you did something at Wakaiba Island. Your yes. Appreciation Day. Yes, that was our first party. Your first party. Three years ago, we started doing, uh, we, we decided, you know, we heard about it many, many moons, and, you know, let's start doing client parties. And so it's just a nice way to get the, um, just to get with your clients, and, and, you know, you're not on a one-on-one lunch. You can kind of get them together, because a lot of our fr- our clients are friends, or they're friends of friends. So it's, you know, people we haven't seen in a while, we get to reconnect with them and, and just see what's going on. We don't want you to call us for a transaction. We want you to call us because there's something else going on in your life, not just because you guys want to buy or sell. Um, so the, you know, we did the, the, the happy hour, uh, what, three years ago that we decided let's do something for the families as well. And we started doing a fall festival and that's like our big ticket item that we love doing now. We have the food trucks, we have trunk or treat, uh, we've got a face painting, petting zoo, a balloon twister, DJ. Where is uh, that? That's going to be at the, it's at the daycare on, on Sand Lake Road. Right next to Lake Brantley? Yep. With private the children's house, Academy. The Yep, it's WCA, Wakaiba, uh, Wakaiba's Children's Academy. Uh, they let us uh, host it there every year. We're now co-sponsoring them with this this year, so we're going to have a lot more people coming. Um, but we'll have 150 to 250 families show up to that event, and it's an awesome thing because it is a two- to three-hour event. You know, the, We get to see the kids and see how they're growing up, and that's, this will be our third year hosting. And, you know, a new one we just put together this year was a happy hour, not a happy hour, sorry, a movie. Uh, so Toy Story 4 just came out. So yes. we did, a, you know, the, the opening day we had the, the event set up for our clients to come out. That was a lot of fun, too. Just, you know, the, it's just something to get the kids into and host it on a Saturday morning. You know you can get a lot of people there, and it was fun. You know, and a lot of the kids came dressed up as what are your, you know, any of the characters that were there. That's so, awesome. So that's, that's some fun stuff. nuggets for agents. Yep. Uh, if you have the, the sponsoring or the financial, and it doesn't have to be something as big as what Todd's doing. Um, right. It could be something small. It could be, you know, buying pies and having them come pick them up. Or it could be a giveaway where you go deliver them or, or just having them come to the office and, hey, we have a culinary pie. Come pick it up for all of our clients. You know, Todd does it big. Um, I remember going back to that first event that you rented the restaurant out at Wakaiba Island. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. That probably yeah. I was we did to... that. We um, Teak Bar in Maitland. We rented out the bar, the inside bar there. Uh, the last year, um, this year we actually had because we made the company move. We did a happy hour at our office, catered. Uh, and I can't remember the caterer's name, but it was it was a great little setup there. Um, everyone came to see our new new digs and just kind of just see, see everyone again that was coming through. Um, this year we're talking about having Santa at the office and everyone can come pick up the trees. Uh, we deliver to all of our clients of the year. Um, usually like a, a rosemary or a poinsettia to the house for the clients that year. So this year we're going to have it at the office with Santa here. So it's going to be cool so we can get the kids in and, and do pictures of Santa. Some, you know, something different. You're giving a Christmas tree or like a little tree? No, oh, those those rosemaries or the, the poinsettias. Or, the red, the know, red flower thing that yeah. you put out in your yard? Okay. Christmas cactus, you know, and we usually hand something out that they can keep. Three years we've had people sending us photos of the same one we gave them three or four years ago. Yeah, <laughs> so they need really some cool. new ones. Yeah. <laughs> they need some new ones. And we have, they haven't killed them yet. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yep. Todd is with EXP. Todd is yep. with EXP. Jeff has just joined EXP. And stay tuned uh, after. I'm going to be talking with Todd on his Facebook about joining with EXP in his office I'm in my home office. He's in his office, which my office is in the same building as that crazy guy. Um, I see him. Uh, he's the, uh, if I point my finger the right direction, I'll go to him. I see him uh, uh, more than I want to. He actually has the head uh, cut out of his head, um, what floating around the office, and everybody moves it around. It's kind of funny. It's a little <laughs> scary because you'll walk in there and he has it posted somewhere uh, that you're not always watching. Always watching. But um, I. 
Uh, so Todd was with Remax. Just a little recap. He did very well with Remax. Very, very well. This podcast is about agents, more agent based. And so Todd give, gave us the layout. We didn't go over exactly what benefited, what Remax helped to benefit with Todd. I, I know Remax is a big brand. I know that their their split is a little different. I know that their training is a little different. Remax is with the balloon, right? Am I thinking? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank God I got that right. That would have been. And if you up. don't put your picture on the internet next to your name, we call you a balloon head. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So <laughs> I've never seen that. Never seen that. Yeah. So what, I want to talk just a very small amount about you know. Did they have the the technical side? Did they have the training side? And then I want to get to the, the exciting part about this. We learned a little bit about you. You're number one or number two in Longwood. Not for long because I'm going to be number one, number two. And you know, we love the challenge. Right. Motion creates motion. Let's keep it going. That's why we're in the same building. And um, Todd approached me. Um, at, well, no, not really. I mean, I've known you for a couple of years now. And, yeah. And, um, the, and I'll say this again. On yours, you know, what? how I think of it is, is an opportunity arose six months ago, and I had to make a decision for my family. I had to make a decision for myself, not for the broker, and I felt like I made the best decision for myself and for my family to be that close to my house with an 11-month-old. My, I'm um, joining Todd at his office. Todd has an office. He's with EXP, and let's just uh, talk real quick about the Remax tools and then jump into EXP. Did they? What did they have? Did they have um, any training, weekly training, new training, or was it just watered down Remax, Remax pamphlets about what Remax does? No, it, they they really didn't push any sort of training. They had some online stuff that was recorded every time I'd go to look at things. It was all years old, um, you know. So we didn't really get pushed on any sort of training. You know, you always hear that you know Remax are top producers. Yes, there's there's thousands of top producers at the company. And there's a lot of people who need help. And they had classes that they had the brokers would teach, except a lot of the brokers didn't want to teach it because they felt the agents didn't want it. And the problem is a lot of agents don't show up to the meetings because we're all independent contractors. We're not forced to go. You know, so it's like you've got to go. you got to show. you got to learn. And ironically, you know, always being one of the top agents in the office, I'm at everything because I want to hear what's new with the contracts. Hey, what's the new tech that's coming out? And I hear some comments that – we're, you know, we're top agents. We don't need to be there for that stuff. I don't, if I don't, if I need to learn about listing presentations, I shouldn't be in this office. Pause, well, pause, pause that, pause that. You yeah. said, I'm a top agent. Yep. I want to learn. I want to be at everything. I want to know what the newest uh, solution is. Pause that. That's your personality. That's yes. what makes you a top agent. And that's what brokers don't, I feel that's what a lot of brokers don't push is to, they don't teach what a, of what the top agent personality should be because not everybody is born or comes and gets their license with that top agent personality. It has to be taught. It has to be trained. It has to, sh you have to show it to somebody and say, right. this is what you're, this is what you're, this is what you should be doing. This is what you should be going after. And if you do these things, you're going to get results. And that's what I love about, um, you know, the, the, the leadership that you provide is, you seek that that consistent training, and I'll I'll say one more thing and let you finish. Yeah, um, I don't know if you said this. I'll give you the credit. I don't think you did, but I'll take athletes, the credit. <laughs> athletes practice ninety five percent of the time to perform only five percent of the time. Professional athletes they train ninety five percent of the time just to perform that five percent to be on cue. Real estate agents we don't train ninety five percent of the time. We perform 95% of the time and only train 5% of the time, and that needs to be fixed. My son's baseball coach, who, who's his pitching coach, the guy said, and I don't remember the, the athlete's name, but he goes, you, you watch him before every game. He's going to go up to the mound, and he's just going to take the step up, step down, step up, step down. He doesn't even do the throw. He just gets that motion going to get his, get his mindset and his body going. And that is key because if you can sit there and just – it's like uh, one of our agents on our team, uh, you know, makes 200 calls a day to expires and for sale by owners, and he's on the he's practicing in the car. He just doesn't walk into the office and pick up the phone and start calling 200 people. He's getting the momentum going while he's driving around. He's learning the scripts. He's doing all this stuff. You have to keep 
learning and earn, learning to earn. And you get as an as a that you said some of the older agents who just don't want to keep up with the tech or anything else, you get stagnant and you can only grow so far. We're always looking for growth. We want to move forward in the pendulum. And if we're just sitting here stagnant, the team will flounder. And so I want to learn, give back, learn, give back, because if I can give back what I've learned, then I'm going to re retain the information more and actually put it in, into implementation. Say that so. again. It, you're not just doing it. You're not just doing it to help the person, but you're doing it to help yourself. And and that right. I learned that a long time ago. So you're giving back your training. You're going to retain it better. Yep. You're going to you're practicing it, and also you're benefiting it by helping someone else. Correct. And that's that mentality. So I think you answered the question. What you know? And then we're not trying to say anything bad about Remax. There's nothing bad about that. There's nothing wrong with the company. I love the company. If I if this opportunity to come along, I'd still be there. I thought I would die with a balloon over my head, and, and with never... plaques over yep. with them plaques, you know, above your head as well. I have those in my casket. <laughs> I can completely agree. Let's let's emphasize it. When big companies have to do training, they have so much money. I don't understand why they don't bring in the brightest of the brightest, like Tom Ferry or these other big names or these big motivational speakers, not just motivational speakers, but these guys that are writing amazing books to do the breakthrough for your, for your attitude, for your confidence, for your work ethic. They give you these pamphlets and they have the managers or the brokers in your situation try to teach it. And all, they're not good at teaching this. Why are we, you know, why are they teaching it? Why don't you have a professional come in and really walk us through or a top producer actually doing this and i think that's why a lot of big companies you know the, the people don't want to go to the sales meeting they don't want to go to the training because they feel that they're not going to get any value they're not going to get why am i going to go waste my time when i can go make calls but this the, the problem that that lies in that is you're not going to get any better if you don't go learn if you don't go move and now we can jump into exp we don't have a lot of time left but we're going to yeah. spend the rest of it on exp EXP, I joined. Um, this is my second week. Second week, love it. Um, like I said, best decision. It was a good decision, best decision I made uh, for the opportunity that rose. EXP is not known for having a brick and mortar. That's how they can pay out a lot more in commission. And that instead of the money going to the top, the money goes down to the bottom. I think I'm saying that right. Instead of the money going to the top, the money goes to the bottom. And Jay Kinder, and I'll tag him in this, Jay Kinder said this. He said, it is financially irresponsible, it is financially irresponsible or, or, or bad for an agent not to look at eXp. And I'll say that again. No other broker says this. It is financially irresponsible of you if you're trying to be financially free or financially successful in real estate not to look at what eXp can do for you. And what he meant by that is, is you have a way of helping. Todd doesn't have to have people on his team to still get earnings from those people. And I feel that a lot of people don't want to help people if they don't get money. You know, yep. me and you do it for free, but now we're, it's a bonus because we can have someone come to the company and still give a lot of knowledge and still bring them in part of our group and still get some type of revenue from that. We're no broker. And that's what I mean by the money goes down. So I, I, I know you can explain it a lot better than I can, but uh, emphasize on that. Well, you know, the, the company doesn't spend the money on the brick and mortar, like you mentioned, and it is expensive to have brick and mortar. I'm a brick and mortar kind of person. I like an office to go to. So it was my opportunity to have the space that we have um, and have the ancillary services that we have inside the office as well. But, you know, that's if they were doing it, then they're going to want more money, want more profit on it. And, you know, a lot of agents, when you look at it, they don't come in the office anymore. So that's the beauty of being in the cloud office. Um, ironically, when I was, when we had the Remax office in here, there was 15 agents here. I, being in here three years, I might have seen them once every three months. Um, and they would walk in, drop a check off and leave instead of now everything is scanned in. Um, the other part, you know, of it, the... I've got a local broker friend here who's got about 100 agents in her office. They've got two locations. One of them is 900 square feet. The other is 1,000 square feet for 100 agents. That's not big. No. They don't – they just – as they needed to move, they've downsized. And they've just – it's like, you know what? No one's coming in. If we need to hold a sales meeting, 
guess what? There's plenty of hotels or restaurants around that can have a, that can host something this big. And so, and know? someone will go to that and have a good speaker or a good presenter, than just yep. go to the office or go, you know, like, and have the same person talk about it. You, yep. you, you, you talked about the cloud before we run out of town. I want to start yep. showing some pictures. Okay, so this is insane. This is insane. I left Pablo Banker. I can say that. Todd left Remax. Those are two massive companies, massive companies. And I'm going to say this, and I can let Todd say it on his Facebook. When someone says, Jeff, what's the difference between Cobble Banker and EXP? Jay Kinder, again, man, he, he has the he has the way to say this. If, if you know who Blockbuster is, I know people know who that is. And if you yeah. know who Netflix is, because everybody has Netflix, Cobble Banker and Remax are Blockbuster. Netflix went to Blockbuster and said, hey, jump on board. This is the new thing. People are going to stop wanting to drive and spend money at your store. They're going to want to sit in the comfort of their home. They're going to want it on demand. What did Blockbuster say, Todd? What did they say? They actually Blockbuster, uh, you know, tried to buy Net or no Netflix tried to buy Blockbuster. Blockbuster said no, that was a mistake. Because now look at them. There's one store left. I think it's in like New Jersey or something. And it's a it, it's a historical museum store. And, yeah. And they're losing money. So the, what me Probably and Todd are trying to teams. say is this: EXP is Netflix, Remax and Caldwell Banker is Blockbuster. So what Todd's saying about the office. When I have a question, if I'm not in the office and I have to go knock on someone's door, interrupt them, which it's, this is one thing that really drives me nuts because when I need help, I would like to get it. It's not always at the time that the office is open and it's not always at the convenient time that someone has able to help me. With EXP, literally all you do is you log into this 3D Grand Theft Auto world. You literally walk around the world and you see my name, Jeff Osborne. So yeah. you're going to see up at the top left-hand corner that there's like these little boxes. And they say go to, they say where to go. This thing has every single office, technical support, all of that. It has all of that. <clears throat> and then also, you, you let's say I have a problem with my uh, email. Let's say I have a problem with my website. Let's say I have a problem. Literally, I just click the button and I go to technical support. So I go right here. I literally click a button. And if you're looking, as you can see on Facebook, I take a, I take a ticket. And within a minute, someone says, it takes me in and I sit at this little desk and I'm talking to a live person. And this is an avatar. Am I saying that right? An avatar. Yeah, that's avatar. You got it. It's, it's on the screen now. It, that, that's, so I literally click that little ticket to the right. And within a minute, I'm talking to somebody, and in real time, they're fixing my problem. Anything like, and I have yeah. a lot of questions at first. I, you know, I was I was just so blown away on how quick I was able to get these things figured out. Now they also have fun stuff. The fun stuff that they have is beach. You can sit here and pretend like you're at the beach. You can go to the lighthouse. There's just all kinds of stuff. It's literally like Grand Theft Auto, minus the killing, the shooting, the drugs, the carjacking. Speedboats. We got speedboats. We got speedboats. You can climb. I mean, there's, you, there's, they allow you to go everywhere. It's really, really cool. But the, 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 the emphasis is you start here, and there's classes. And all those people that are standing next to me, you can talk to them. They're all over the country. There's over, I think, 2,000 people in Florida right now with EXP. That's amazing. 2, yeah, half of them are in Orlando. But the, you can talk to any of these people. And there's another thing that really, like, I, I'm th this right here, I don't know why. So I just showed the world. Now I'm going to go to Workplace. This is a Facebook group. I don't have a lot of screenshots of this. But come on, you're a big company and you don't have a Facebook group. You don't have groups for people that are close to each other to help each other to share campaigns. There's literally a group that says strip campaign mastery. Um, there's a group that says um, making it rain. There's a group that helps you with scripts. And it's just every single day there's people jumping and dumping information on there. Todd, do you have anything you want to say anything about the workplace platform? You know, the workplace, it, we go in there and get so much valuable content. There's people, like you said, are sharing so much stuff on it. You know, if I've got questions, I go post a comment. And like any Facebook group, there's agents that are willing to share what they're doing. 
and best practices and everything else. Um, if I need somebody's information, if someone's doing a, uh, uh, you know, a, a new system, they're willing to share their content on how they've set up and, and jump on a call. It's, it was hard with agents around our offices before to even get that kind of support. Um, you know, so it's, it's nice that just the collaboration that happens. And, you know, it's, if you, honestly, if you've got issues and want to get them to set something up, a lot of the, a couple of those, a lot of the people in there are, are also coaches that will take over and, and get the stuff running for you so you can be set up uh, completely. Um, so it's nice with the stuff that's going on there. We're, I mean, we love Workplace, and we get a lot of the information out of it. And it is just like Facebook. I mean, so it's nice you're not learning something different. Uh, what I love that they do also is they take it off of Facebook and put it into Workplace. Yes. There, you go to Colwell, Remax, uh, Keller, all of them, they've got so many different Facebook groups that you or I have started and then just gotten out of hand. This, they don't have anything EXP on Facebook, so you're not going to find a variation of groups. It's all in workplace, so you're not going to have the average. You know, I don't know how many brute groups I'm in that I'm that I, that are part that are run by other brokerages that they don't even know that I'm in there. Um, that I can just see their content, they're running, and all that stuff. So uh, this is cool because it's nice and it's you know it's confined. It's controlled. Yep. I didn't I didn't realize that. So with other Facebook groups that are just made by other people, they're they're not really made by big companies, Keller Williams, Remax, Cold yep. Banker. The one thing I learned is, you know, does brand matter? And you, you, you are your own brand, and you know that's what you've got to learn to promote is you, and then you're promoting the company behind you. The, when we were leaving Remax and making the decision to go to EXP, we kept thinking, okay, is it going to make a difference in our in our presentation, who we are, and what we're doing? None of the services that we had available at Remax we used. Everything was all third party that because we wanted to have, have a step up of what was provided, and so it didn't make a difference in the move and. I haven't lost a single listing where where our volume is up from last year to, you know, what company are you with? They don't even ask. I don't even say, I'm just, hey, I'm Todd Schroth, and that's it. Yeah, I am an agent. I have, you know, a team, and this is how we sell. And I don't sell this many homes because of this company. I sell this many homes because of myself and my team that that we're surrounded with. So you are your own brand, and that's the brand that matters. And that's the brand. You are your own brand, and that's the brand that matters. And you said this at the beginning of your statement. You said, we were using a lot of third-party services. And I'm going to go back onto that. That's what I said at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Brokers don't give you the tools that you need. So you have to go outside and get them. And they cost money. They cost, you're paying monthly for these services. And being with a broker that can give you just one or two tools that you don't have to pay for or being on a team that can give you all these tools that you don't have to pay for. Why would you want to stay with the broker, with the brand, this brand that you're buying all these third party, and that could be training, that could be coaching, that could be coaching. You're looking good because you're investing the time and the money to look good, not because the broker is doing anything to help you look good. They're just who you have to be assigned with. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. I think that, you know, they, they're, they're the ones that we check in with every morning. They're the ones that, you know, checks our whatever schedule or God, I don't know. They, I, and, and that's why I like doing this podcast is to open the door and really show people behind the scenes stuff. So we're, yeah. we're, we're running out of time. We talked about Todd. We talked about his family. We talked about where he's at. Um, we, we hit 44 minutes, so we got to cut it. Yeah. Um, we talked yeah, about... You I'm going to dip in a couple things. If you want to schedule a time to talk with me about EXP and look at some of the things we have, go to our website, toddschroth.work, and we'll drop drop it in the link. And also, if you want to just catch a, a, a video on Kinder and, and EXP and, and, and the brand that, and the team that we're with, go to whypartnerwiththepros.com. I highly recommend, highly recommend if anybody's interested in learning more about how to better their career and how to be, become more financially independent. And it's a private call. It's a private message. It's a, you know, no one knows, you know, that anybody's talking to anybody. We don't blast out that we're meeting with so-and-so. It's a private, like that anything, it's a deal. Public, private, personal. And, and the reason why I said that, that's a big deal with me because you don't, you know, it's sad that brokers, some brokers are like that, but it's like working at a bank. As soon as they find out that you're no longer committed to them, they cut you and score you out of the building with security. Thank you, Todd. Right. It was a pleasure. Again, Jeff of all trades. If you have any questions, concern, please reach out to me. 
We'll put all this, all this details in the video and on the link. Thank you, Jeff Osborne. Yes, Have sir. a great day. All right. See you.